Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I wanted to release an update for my uh, Terranode tools that includes a, an export tool, a, uh, an add-on that helps with exporting the data out of Blender if you're wanting to use it in like a game engine or uh, something else. Um, before we get to that, there's a couple things, just to, I don't remember, I made some changes earlier to a couple of the nodes, really minor things, and then Someone pointed out that if you have, if you're using the scatter node to scatter like plants around and your viewport gets really slow, um, you can actually improve the, view per the viewport performance by realizing the instances. Um, now, you might not always want to do that in certain cases. So anyway, it's an option now. By default, it's on. You can check or uncheck um, to realize the instances on all of your scatter objects. Um, other than that, I don't think I've changed much um, with the nodes. So if we hop over here to this scene, um, this is the workflow demo scene that I made for the workflow demo video. And I've been using it as sort of a test subject for uh, testing the exporting stuff. After I put the update up, um, which I'll do before I release this video, um, there will be a zip file either in the new versions, there'll be either a zip file in the zip file or alongside it um, that includes the this Python add-on for the Terranode tools. Um, what it does is it adds this DJH Terranode panel under the DJH tab, which are just my initials, um, of your N panel that you bring up by pressing N on the keyboard. And um, inside of that, if you select a terrain, it will add options. And before you do that, you have to install it. You do that the same way you do with any other add-on. You go to your preferences, you click on the add-ons option, and you click install. Then you just browse to and select that zip file for the add-on and you click install add-on and it will be installed. Once it's installed, it'll show up here um, and you may have to check it to enable it. I don't remember if it's enabled by default. Inside, under the foldout for the uh, 3D view DGH Terranode add-on, there are some settings that hopefully you'll just have to set once and then can leave the same. So the first one is um, export target. So generic just sort of is generic. Um, Unreal and Unity both have some preferences about like sizes and formats of different things. So if you're only going to be using one of those, I'd recommend checking the Unreal if you're using Unreal or Unity if you're using Unity. Otherwise, generic should be fine. Then you can choose a format for exported maps. These are attribute maps. So you can export like your steepness or curvature stuff to an image, like a baked image. Um, I think PNG is the default. Then for importing into Unreal or Unity, um, they prefer to have the, rather than like a PNG or an EXR image, they prefer this raw format. Um, this is one of the things that changes based on the export target. Unreal likes this, the for, the extent, that's the same file format, but Unreal likes the extension to be R16 and Unity wants the extension to be raw. Um, anyway, if you check this, it will save that kind of file, um, the height map when you export. And then you can choose what size that should be from this drop down here. Again, in Unity at least, it's very particular about that size being a multiple of eight. So that's why um, that's those sizes. I'm not going to show today how to import this into Unreal or Unity. I've done it for both of them. It's possible. Um, I don't feel like I have it super streamlined yet. Anyway, one of the things I was experimenting with when importing in, into Unity was I wanted to not use the default Unity terrain shader because the way the Unity terrain shader works with flat maps and being able to like paint on it with a brush wasn't really uh, matching up with what I was where I was wanting to export these attribute maps and use them to define how the terrain should be rendered. Anyway, so I ended up making my own shader for rendering the terrain and I wanted to use texture arrays in that. Um, Unity supports texture arrays, but there's no way to create texture arrays. So I ended up making a custom asset format that I called .tarr for texture array. And all that is is a list of the images that were exported when you export the terrain. And then I was able to make a custom asset importer that could read that text file, load the relevant images into a three into a texture array rather, and then have that be the asset. Anyway, probably just want to ignore that. It, the .tarr file is just a text file of the file names of the, in this case, PNG images that would be saved. Anyway, that's it for preferences. 
once you have those set um, however you want, unless you, you're really changing what you're doing, you should just be able to leave them how they are. Then in the 3D viewport, you'll see there's this tear node panel and it, by default we will always just say select a terrain object. It determines if you selected a terrain object by looking for a modifier with the terrain base name. Um, you can change the, the name here, that doesn't matter, but the actual node group is named terrain base here. Once you have a train object selected, you might want to rename them. This is another thing that varies depending on if you're exporting to Unity or Unreal or generic, um, but they have ways they like the terrain tiles to be named. So you can do that, select any of the terrains, click auto name terrains, and you can see here it's terrain one through six. If you auto name terrains, is terrains X, Y coordinates and tiles. And if we go in here to preferences and we made this unreal and we auto name the trains, then they'd be train X zero, Y zero, et cetera, because that's how unreal likes them named. Anyway, once the trains are auto named, all of the images that are saved for that train will share the name of the object. So just make sure you have that right. Then in outputs, you can create images to save. So we could create a new output. By default, nothing will show up here. You want to read the attributes off of the mesh. So that will um, look through all of the modifiers, see what sort of attributes were created, and pull them out into a list that we can select from. Then we can add a new output. We can name this output um, my map. You can name it whatever you want. That's the prefix for the image name. Then you can choose what the red, green, and blue and alpha channels are going to be. So right now, this is when you read the attributes, it populates this list with all of the attributes on the mesh. There's some default options. Um, none is zero or black, half is 0 0.5 or gray, one is white. So if you just want to fill a channel with something, for example, the alpha channel you might want to have as one, just so you're not using it. Anyway, then we could select from here, we want to do I don't know, elevation, roads, and uh, curvature for whatever reason. Then there's a resolution for the image. Um, you can pick whatever resolution you want there. That's the square dimension of the image that will be created. So it'll be 256 by 256. There is a checkbox here if you want to export the water meshes. If you enable that, it will save FBX files um, of the terrain, but only the water surface. And then finally, you can put in a path here where you want all, the folder where you want all of those images that you're exporting to be saved. Um, the easiest way to get that is to bring up a uh, file explorer, copy the address, and paste it in there. We'll do map test two. Once you're happy with the settings and you've configured everything how you want, all you have to do is click export terrain, and it will start working in the background. If we bring up this map test two folder, we will see this is that raw height map. This is the image that with the channels that we selected here, the my map. And it will render a pair of those for every tile in the train. So that's basically it as far as exporting stuff goes. Obviously to get it all imported into another program is a whole another set of problems to solve. Um, just to show that it's possible, here I have it in Unity. Uh, just to give a sort of a rough idea, the process of importing this all into Unity was rather painful because because uh, I guess this isn't really how the Unity terrain system is supposed to work. I had to make a whole custom shader for it. Um, there was a tool I used that you can get from the package manager called the Terrain Toolbox. And if you bring that up, um, it allows you, it's supposed to be able to allow you to import a set of tiled height maps. Um, there's some problems with that. Like once you've set, once you've imported it once, you can't really change it or, or you'll lose all of your edits that you've made to the terrain. So I don't really like this tool super well. If I keep working on this, I might switch it, um, rip, sort of write my own version of this with a lot less options, but that does what I want it to do the way I want it to do it. Um, Cause I imagine editing the terrain object via script is fairly easy. But I imported it all on terrains. There's six terrain there's six 
terrain objects in the scene um, with terrain colliders and all of that. They have a custom material on them that uses a custom shader that I just made in Shader Graph um, to use these texture arrays, which are importing that tar file I mentioned to um, assign a different uh, attribute map to each tile in the terrain. And that gets this result here. And if we play it, it looks a little nicer with the anti-aliasing and stuff. And you can see that's sort of what it looks like. It's not um, perfect, but doesn't look terrible either. I don't know. I'm definitely not 100% happy with it yet. I want to keep working on it and see if I can uh, improve the process a bit. But it's in there. It's imported. It's possible. Um, the export part works nicely. All right. And then finally here in Unreal Engine, I have the same scene again. And ironically, in Unreal Engine, importing it was rather easy, and it looks really nice. <laughs> um, as far as how I imported this, um, you just go to the landscape tool, and there's an option to import it. And it just it had to have that naming convention I mentioned, but then it just imported the tiles. And then as far as the materials and stuff go, I did a layered material, which worked. I really like this system. I think it's very intuitive. You create material layers. So these are very simple um, shaders, essentially. They just have a color and a normal map texture. The color map has the height in the alpha channel, the height map, for blending purposes. And then in the terrain shader, all you do is you edit the layers and you stack them on top. So this background is rock and then, or dirt or mud or something. And then you lay rock over it and you'd say, how do you want to do that? And this height blend shader function is a lot like the height blend node I made here to blend that, so that shader function is basically this height mixer node in, but in Unreal Engine. And then you can edit the parameters to control what masks it uses and stuff. Anyway, that worked pretty well as far as um, getting this result in Unreal Engine. Um, the tri one thing that was a little tricky with Unreal Engine is I didn't see a way to specify how tall the terrain should be. So I know in Blender, I export from 0 to 10 meters as 0 to 1 for the height map. But I couldn't figure out when trying to import the landscape a way to say this landscape is 10 meters tall. Um, unless I just missed it. So anyway, so then you have to edit the scale on the z-axis of the terrain so that it's not... Um, Let's see, where's the terrain here? Landscape. So the landscape has a 21.5 Z scale because 100 looks like this. Um, anyway, if anyone knows anything about that, I'd be interested in making that more accurate because it was, I had to really, I thought it should have been like, well, if it was 100 meters, which it should have been 10 but it wasn't 10, because when I exported the mesh of the plants, um, you can see it doesn't quite line up. There's like a little gap. They're floating in the air, so it would be nice if you could make that more um, exact. Anyway, so importing, obviously, tons of challenges to overcome, but um, it is now possible to export the data into formats that you should be able to work with um, if you're willing to figure out how to. So yeah, I just want to get that out there, let you know that there is an update, and the update is mainly this add-on for exporting a couple of minor changes to a couple nodes. Um, if you're just hearing about the, my Terra node tools, um, you can go to my website, danielhickox.com, and read all about it. There's a trailer video. You can go to more info, read all about the workflow and all of the nodes, 
see all of the nodes in action, how they work and their properties and all of that. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in it, go to danielhoodguys.com, Terra node. Anyway, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully it was interesting and thanks for watching.